In this video we're having a look at how to find the minimal spanning tree for a network. So let's first of all establish the definition of what a minimal spanning tree is. A minimal spanning tree is one that connects all of the vertices of a network with the smallest total length. Working backwards from that, a tree is a network with no cycles. So let's have a look at some examples of the cases where we have a tree and not a tree. We can see in this diagram on the left hand side that all of the vertices are connected by various edges and there are no cycles in the network. In the second example we do have a cycle so this is not a tree. We can see the cycle is one that repeatedly goes around A, E and C. To find the minimal spanning tree there are two basic approaches we can use. There's one approach where we can work through the network very methodically and we'll go through that and we can also use a process called Prim's algorithm and that requires us to make a table which represents the network. We can see here a table that represents each one of the vertices and how far it is to any other vertices which are connected to it. So for example if we look at any of the vertices in the left hand column they tell us first of all which vertex we're coming from. So we'll go to the row with the letter B. If we then scan across we can see that from B to S is 5 units, B to A is 2 units, B to C 2 units, B to D 5 units and B to E 3 units. We can also see that B is not connected to T nor is it connected to itself. In fact none of the vertices are connected to themselves. So we'll now go through the process of using Prim's algorithm to find the minimal spanning tree. But at the same time we'll put the solution down on the network and you are able to go through and find the minimal spanning tree using the network alone. So let's first of all start with any particular vertex that we want. We're going to start with vertex A. And the reason why we can start with any vertex is because all the vertices must ultimately be connected to make the minimal spanning tree. So whichever one you choose should end up with the same solution. The first step is to choose a vertex which is closest to A. So if we look at our network diagram we've actually got two options. We could choose vertex S or vertex B. We'll have a look at how we do this in Prune's algorithm. The first thing we do is make sure that we rule out row A. The reason why we do that is because the numbers in row A are identical to those in column A. So we're just looking at the columns in Prim's algorithm. So we can see in that column with A that there are lengths of 2, 2 and 7. And our aim is to choose the smallest value. Now in this case we've actually got a choice. So it doesn't actually matter which one we choose we're going to choose the two that connects to vertex S. You can see in our network diagram that we've highlighted the edge between A and S because that's our first choice which is part of our solution for the minimal spanning tree. Now what happens is we look for vertices that are closest to A and S. So in our table for Prim's algorithm we're going to rule out all of the values in row S and have a look at the results in column A and S and we're looking for the smallest number out of those two columns. Now we can see in green that the numbers in column S and column A are 5, 5, 2 and 7. So the choice that gives us the smallest number is the two connecting vertex A and vertex B. If we were doing this just via the network diagram we'd also look at the vertices A and S and all the edges next to them and you'd still see that 2 is the smallest amount connecting vertex A or S to the other vertices. Our next step is to highlight the edge connecting A to B and also using Prim's algorithm cross out row B and now we're looking at the entries in columns S, A and B and trying to determine the smallest number in each of those three columns. So we can see this time that the smallest number is in column B and that's a 2 and that connects vertex B to vertex C. Now what we do is repeat the process. We make sure that we highlight the edge connecting B and C and in our table what we do is we cross out row C and now we look at the entries that remain in columns S, A, B and C and see which one's the smallest. So we can see in those numbers that the smallest number is a 3 
and that's the edge that connects vertex B and vertex E. So once again we highlight that edge on the network connecting B and E and now in the table we cross out all the entries in row E and we're looking at the columns which are S, A, B, C and E. And again we're looking for the smallest number. So when we go through that process we can see that the smallest number is in column E and that's a 1 and that connects the vertices E and D. So same again, we repeat the process. We highlight the edge connecting D and E. We put a circle around the one in the table. Cross out row D, and now we're looking at the columns which are S, A, B, C, D and E. There's not many numbers left to choose from because basically all we're trying to do is work out the best way to connect vertex T. So the choices that we have are only between five and seven. So clearly the smallest number there is a 5. So again we repeat the process. We connect the edge between D and T, which is 5 units. And we now have the formation for our minimal spanning tree. If we look at all the numbers that we've circled in our table and make sure that all of those edges on the network are the ones that are highlighted, we have our minimal spanning tree. And we can see that here in this diagram. The length of the minimal spanning tree we can get by adding up all the amounts on the edges and that comes to 15. So that's our minimal spanning tree. It fits the criteria of being a tree and all the vertices are connected to give the smallest length.